to do it like this. Hey, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. It's me, Anthony. I'm back again to come share some amazing tips. My partner in crime will be out for a few weeks, so she'll be back uh, shortly. Uh, but for the next few weeks, she just got me. I hope that's a good, hope that's not too bad for everybody. But I have an amazing, uh, some amazing tips that I believe can really, really help you out. It's some things I'm personally working on. And like always, I love to come share knowledge and also give you some action steps so you can grow in your business. You're not watching this in the middle of the day or watching the recording. You're not going to be watching something for the next 15 minutes or so just to get on here. You are on here because you want to grow in this industry, in your business. And so this isn't a product call. I'm just going to let you know this isn't a product call. Uh, I'm, I won't talk much about products. I will really relate to some of the concepts that go with you know, some of the protocols to, you know, developing better health and everything, because I think it goes hand in hand. But for this call, it's about, you know, knowledge and taking action. You know, at the end of the day, you got to take action. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't put it into work, it doesn't mean anything. But everybody knows that's tuned in before, and if they're brand new, I love to start off with a question. I love to ask everybody a question to get their mind going. So my question for everybody today is, are you afraid to fail? Are you afraid to fail? You don't have to, you don't have to respond. You don't have to put in the comments. I can just speak from experience a long, for a long time in my life. I was afraid to fail. I personally was afraid to fail. I was afraid to to not make the starting lineup at, in any kind of sport. I was afraid not to win a, a race in track. I was afraid when I got into this business, I was afraid to make the calls. I was afraid of rejection. See, and I'm gonna be honest, mostly everybody is afraid at one point in time. A lot of us are afraid to reach out to certain people because we're afraid of what they would think of us, what their response will be. Some of us love so many people, like we love some of the people so much that we don't want to hear them tell us no. And see, when you're afraid, it's okay. I just want to let you know, it's okay to be afraid. Hey, I was there. But what I learned was failure is a part of success, no matter what endeavor it is in your life that you want. And I'm going to say it, say it like this. I read it. I don't know where it came from, but it says to achieve meaningful success i mean you to really be to be considered successful by virtually any standard you must be willing to fail you have to be willing to fail meaning in this business you have to be willing to uh have people no show you on appointments you have to be willing for people not to call you back you have to be willing for somebody to try a product, order a product, and then never even try it. So you got to be willing to go through these failures because that's a part of this business. But what I can tell you is the only difference between the Ty Rollins, the Steve Swartz, the Brent Palmers, the Tammy Maltbleys, the Devin Ken Signers, the TLs, is that they just had more failures than all of us on, the, on this call. That's it. People say, well, and how'd you get so, how'd you get to where you are? Well, I'm gonna be honest. I had more people not show up to a party. I had more people cancel on the appointment. I was five minutes away. I had more people now. I had more people say they, they got busy, forgot about the Zoom. I had more of that than you. That's it. That's the only difference. There's no exceptions to failure. It, there's no exceptions to anything. So you got to think about all the great people out there that have done anything. See, now we go outside of network market. Think about the, think about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, Bill Gates, Mark Cuban, Mark Zuckerberg, it, the Wright brothers. It doesn't matter who it is, but just look at them and say, you know what? They are successful. But think about how many times they failed. Think about how many times they didn't make the game-winning shot. They didn't make the game-winning throw. They didn't make, uh, you know, I know, for instance, like Mark, Mark Cuban and, and – Bill Gates, because that was my major, I know how many times it took to do a program. I know how many times you will fail when, when something don't go right, trying to write a program, trying to make a website. I know what it's like. 
So everything in life is going to come with failure. And when you can accept, it's like, it's not really like you accept it, but you like use it as motivation. So every time, what I want you to do is every time somebody tells you no, you say, okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. I got better. That's tip number one. Tip number one is remind yourself that you can learn from every failure. So every time somebody tells you, hey, that that opportunity you have, that product that you have, that's not for me. Okay, remember that you can learn from that. You can learn from that. You can ask yourself, okay, what could I have done better? How could I have maybe shortened the presentation up? How could I have just utilized a tool? How can I, how can I have gotten better? I always say, take notes. If you did a presentation, you did a party, you did something like that, okay, go back and take notes. Hey, I, you know what? I went a little too long on the product part. I went a little too long on the business standpoint. Maybe I was a little too hard here. Taking notes really, really will help you out in the long run because you can always go back and you can critique yourself. Tip number two, I would say is find yourself an accountability partner or partners slash support group. Find you some people that that that'll jump on that Zoom with you that'll say, hey, you know what? Let me jump on that Zoom. Let me, let me, let me uh, go to the presentation with you. Let me see what you're doing so I can help you get better. It may be an upline, cross line, side line, down line, success line. It doesn't matter. But find you some people or a person. You might have to start. You may be brand new. You may say, hey, well, I don't have a lot of people. I don't know a lot of people. Okay, find one person and say, hey, we're going to run. We're going to do this together. It may be your spouse. It may be your best friend. It may be somebody who said, hey, I'm going to do this business with you. But find somebody to say, hey, can you help me? Can you, can you? Can you critique me? Can you be can you be real with me? See, you don't need somebody to say, hey, you did an amazing job and it really wasn't that good. You need somebody that's going to be real. You know, I, I think back when I was running track and, you know, we became state champions in high school, but we had four guys on this four by four. But guess what? It, it took four of us. But when our first leg didn't run good, we let them know. We told them like, man, you sucks. Like you could have been better. Like, are you scared? Like, if you're scared, we might well put one of the freshmen on here or one of the uh, uh, somebody else because we was all seniors. So we have to be real with each other. And that's what I understand that some of y'all may not like that, but that's what you need here because you're going to go through adversity. You're going to go through those failures. And when you're trying to overcome failure, and not really just overcome it, but when you're trying to embrace failure, because I believe you need to embrace the failure to have success in this industry. And then tip number three, this is real big, real, real big here, is you got to study the successful people. You got to study them like, okay, what are they doing? How do they, you know, I don't know if y'all have ever uh, been around TL or been around Deb and Ken or around Todd Rowland or Brent Palmer when, when we have an appointment set up and nobody shows up. They don't, they don't put their head down like, man. I thought that person was coming. No, they say, hey, okay, what can we learn from it? How can we take the next 15 minutes and maybe let's call a couple of people and see what other appointments we can schedule? See, they take that time and either use it as training. They utilize it as a learning experience, a coaching experience. See, the great people learn to utilize every bad situation that's supposed to be bad and turn it into a good situation. And so that's what you can always learn. Tip number four is in dealing with energy. See, energy is very, very powerful, you guys. So if you let your team see you down because of, or you see, let your team see you get upset about something that didn't go right, didn't go your way, guess what happens to those people? How you think they're going to start acting when nobody shows up? How you think, how you think all of that's going to happen? See, nobody wants to be around somebody, the negative Nancy or the negative the negative ant. Nobody wants to be around that person. Everybody wants to be around somebody who's energetic. Somebody who said, you know what? It's just something about that person. I want to be around that person more. I want to learn from that person. So remember your energy is very, very powerful. Meaning when I say that your team is going to do what you do. So if you're positive, uplifted, even when things 
aren't going well, even when everybody's hanging up in your face, not returning calls, all those different type of failures, guess what? Your team will say, hey, you know what? I can't do that. I always tell you, I, always, I was always told, complain up, not complain down. Never complain down. Never complain to your team. If you have a complaint, find somebody above you to complain to. Don't, don't complain down. You never complain down to the people that's in your organization. And then tip number five is you got to feed your brain and you got to stay plugged in. What you're doing right now when you're watching this look, this short call, when you're jumping on calls like this live, this is feeding your brain. This is keeping you going. This is something that when failure is happening, you got to stay plugged in. When people are walking out of your business and, and leaving to go to another company or doing this or stopping the products, turning their subscriptions off, or you know, you're not having success, you got to stay plugged in. This is when you need to stay plugged in the most because this is when the enemy really tries to pull you away, say, hey, this is it for you. Maybe you should try something else. Maybe you should do this. Well, guess what? If every person ran from all the obstacles, nothing in life would ever get achieved. We wouldn't have airplanes. We wouldn't have cars. We wouldn't have boats. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have anything. If every time adversity came, people quit and ran off. So remember, that's where you stay plugged in. That's where you stay engaged. And my tip was, it came out of the book because I was reading the new network marketing book. I'm always, you know, I'm always reading. This is a go for no for network marketing. And, you know, it's pretty much teaching you how to, you know, push for failure pretty much. Because a lot of people don't understand that failure and success go hand in hand. See, a lot of people will run and go through a brick wall for success. How many of y'all, if I told y'all, it was a million dollars and you had to be in New York. How many, how long, how quick would you get there? Everybody would go crazy for it. People may say, well, it's not about the money, but if I told you it was a free million dollars, all you had to do was get to New York, you'll find a way, even if you didn't have the money. See, it's a success there that you already know that's there. You do anything for that. But if I told you it was a million dollars there, you got to go through a hundred no's. How many of y'all would go through the hundred no's? Or what if I told you you had to go through a thousand no's? See, it doesn't it doesn't matter, but you probably got to go through a thousand people telling you no and you get a million dollars. How many of y'all would quit at number 10 no? Or number 25? Or number 250? How many say, you know what, it just ain't worth it? How many of you, see, so many people would do anything for success, but when it comes for failure, you're quick to run away from it. Failure is part of it. So my action step for everybody is today is I'm going to remind you that the only way you get to success is by failure. So what if I told you this? You got to fail more to have more success. Meaning you got to go through more people telling you no before you can get a yes. So my challenge for everybody is pick a number between one through 10. And for the next seven days because we'll be back next Wednesday and I want I want to get some people's you know honest opinion and, and, and results back next week but so I know if if you're a little scared to share you probably won't come back next week but it's okay but I want you to go out there and you pick a number through one through ten and every single day I want that's how many no's I want you to get so for me my number is 10 so for the next seven days, Every single day, I'm not going to bed until I get at least 10 people that tell me, no, I'm not interested in your business and opportunity. Or, or I mean, product or opportunity, I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, so I'm not going to sleep until 10 people tell me no. I don't care who tells me yes, because see, what I know is the yeses will come. But even if my first three all say yes, I still can't go to bed until I get the no's. Because that was part of what I, that was my, my goal. So you find a number. It may be two. You know what? You say, you know what? I'm not going to bed until I get two people that tell me no. Two people. Two people are going to tell me no before I go to bed. I'm not interested in your products. I'm not interested in your opportunity. So that's the action steps for everybody. Again, it just hop, pick a number, one through 10, 
whatever that number may be for you, it doesn't matter. Mine is 10. Don't make it no more than 10. I don't want you overwhelming yourself. Uh, so just pick 10. But remember, it's part of it. You may, it's part of the, the process. So you're not pushing for yeses. We're pushing for the no's. How many people can tell me no? You may, you may, it's easy to go. Hey, you know what, Marlene? You may not, I know you're not going to be interested, but I just need you to sit down, give me 15 minutes of time. I need to share something with you. You can tell me no at the end. Please tell me no. See, now it's different. I'm not telling that person to tell me yes. And watch how that helps you out when you're presenting. See, now you'll get more people because you already gave them a way out. That's another tip. But that you gave them a way out before they even sat down. You already said, hey, I want you to tell me no. But I promise you this, everybody won't say no. It'll be a lot harder than what you think. Uh, so that's the challenge. Pick a number through one through 10, figure it out, and go for it. So that's all I have for everybody. I'm going to stop the recording, and I thank y'all. I, I can't wait to hear everybody's uh, return back next week on, you know, their, their stats and how it went. So adios, everybody. Thank you, Ant. <laughs> all right, Ant.